Everybody get up and dance. It's I, over. It's it's done. The the economy's back and just tell Romney to put it in a bag and uh, mail it to some other country because it's over. 908 8 past 9, the Bruce and Dan show. John Cass, Jake Hartford in for Bruce and Dan. I wish they were here to share this happy moment. You know, it's almost like we don't have to endure any more of this political problem, these, you know, debates. It's just forget about it because we're happy. The unemployment rate has dropped below 8%. It is at 7.8%. Last month, a staggering 113,000 jobs. That's right. You heard me right. A staggering 113,000 jobs were added to the economy, and, and happy the, days are here again. And and, how, and what, 98,000 were at like 7-Elevens, but... It doesn't matter. It's a staggering you know, 113,000 jobs. Right. And the unemployment rate is now at 7.8%. Hey, can I biggie size that? We are back to normal. Let's just, uh, can I have the extra, like the double cheeseburger? What's wrong with you today? No, I'm just happy. Seven you don't point, sound happy. Oh, no, I am. I'm I'm ecstatic. Uh, this is the October surprise. Uh, Ten thirty. Not a surprise to, to those who have seen the economy inching up upwards all these months. At ten thirty seven, we're going to have Jim Pedagukis on uh, to explain uh, just what this means and how the job numbers are arrived. And and uh, I got to tell you, if I were looking to buy a house, I'd be out there today. I feel like buying a boat and a house right now. I'm just going to just dump everything, any meager savings we have, and just buy stuff. Because the economy's back. People have their jobs back. The go- People are happy. The Obama administration released numbers that make Obama look good. There, well, there, how could there, you be? There you go again, putting a negative spin on I, it. It's a positive spin. I'm just trying to relate the facts here. You should be friend. happy. We're at 7.8%. percent let hear the music again. I'm just the kinda, I want to dance with Jake in the studio. You're never happy. No, I am very happy here. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Come on, Jake. Yeah, Let's you do should a little be. Happy day polka. See, see, seven point eight percent. We're back. We're back to normal. It's it's over. The campaign's done. What campaign, David? Uh, we were told that if it went under eight percent, Obama would win. Correct. And even now, the stories are... You can't dispute this the numbers. A, you can't dispute the numbers, John. These are official <coughs> United States Labor Department numbers. Yeah, you start, you official Obama Department of Labor numbers. Oh, and please, I think please, that's please. great. 113,000, a staggering total, was added last month. Right. And that's a lot of jobs. Let's te- go to the phones. Uh, Candace on the south side. Good morning, Candace. Good morning, guys. You know, these numbers are totally bogus. We, he has a huge flop and a debate. It is a huge game changer. And then suddenly the unemployment numbers drop three points. Are you out of your mind? No, no not three points, three, not. three tenths of a point. Okay, okay. And then what happens in three months that has been happening all during the Obama administration? They adjust the numbers. Oh, sorry, we made a mistake. And what that's going to happen after he uh, gets elected? I mean, these people will stop at nothing. Candace, can't you be happy for once for some... This is good news. Yesterday, you were so wrong. And thank you, John Cass. You were so right. Obama was a total loser in the debate. But Candace, can I have like uh, can I have the Happy Meal? That's, this is kind of like a Happy Meal for, for, for us, isn't it? <laughs> I'd like to biggie size that Happy Meal because I'm so excited. I know. I'm ready to go spend all my savings. No, I'm not, I'm not spending anything if Obama gets elected again. Thank you, Candace. Thank you. I can't believe the cynicism of these people. I just can't believe you can't be happy for people who have jobs again. I am happy. Ron in Chicago. Hey, Ron, you're on 89 WLS. Well, I believe that number, 114,000. I see more people on cups with uh, on corners with cups in their hand collecting change now than I ever did. Well, you know what? When you pass those people by today, would you please tell them the unemployment's under 8%? They should go find the job? No, they don't have to. That's their job. I mean, that's what Obama said, hope and change. Every guy that's standing out there with that cup in his hand is, is hoping that the next guy in line has change to give him. That's his hope and change. Hey, Ron, do you remember only a few years ago when Bush was in office and uh, there were 300,000 jobs added a month, and it was a terrible, terrible number, and it was enough to burn him in effigy, but... Isn't that naive, though, that it automatically dropped below uh, 8% and only a month from the election? Hey, I predict uh, another. I got another prediction for you. You're too cynical. 
uh, Ob- uh, Osama bin Laden will be killed. Yeah, I think so. He'll, he'll get him. He's going to get him. Obama's going to get him, but Hillary's going to do it because the Obama ain't got time for that. He'd rather be on the View. Th- thank you, thank you, sir. Right, bye bye. Have- I'm I'm uh, I'm the eye candy in this uh, studio. Uh, Nine thirteen, Sam on the northwest side. Welcome to eighty nine WS, Sam. How are you guys doing? Hey, I'm Sam. happy. We're under eight percent. I, I want to ask you, John. Did you do the same thing about the numbers when they were George Bush's numbers or? Um, I don't remember. I know you're a loyal reader. Did you find that column? No, I I didn't. And I want to ask you, John. Yes, sir. Uh, I I, I would really. You made fun about, you said that the jobs are at McDonald's and 7-Eleven. I'm not for that type of a job either. But do you think that um, Mr. Romney, when he was at Bain, that his goal was to increase the wages of American workers? No, I'll tell you. I haven't finished. Or do you think he was... Interested in increasing shareholder wealth, which is in direct conflict with increasing the wages of American workers. Sam, instead of taking economics, I was watching, you know, uh, take studying film, so I don't know about that. But I, I thought I that his, too, I John. thought his, I thought that his main focus, that Romney's main focus uh, at Bain was giving cancer to the unemployed well, steelworkers' wives. Question here: Do you think that? Do you think that a person whose management level See, he's a hedge fund guy. Do you think that his goal is to increase uh, the wages of American workers, or do you think that he's for uh, taking these great jobs where, that are protected by unions with great wages, shipping them to other countries to increase the Hey, value? Sam, I hate to do this, do this to okay. you, Sam, but when you ask a question that goes over a minute and it's 9.15, I have to go to traffic. It's 89W. Sorry, Sam. Nine sixteen, Jake and John uh, here here on eighty nine W less until eleven, and let the record reflect that that Sam came on at nine thirteen thirty and went off at nine fifteen even, and you know we're talking about the jobless numbers today. We're not talking a big discussion about Bain Capital this and that, but to the question which was in there somewhere about you know the, it's shareholder wealth versus people getting paid a lot of money. You could the workers you can have both. You can have a successful company. Who does? Who makes profits for their shareholders? And in a lot of cases, the majority of the cases, the shareholders are individual people with pensions and right, retirement. That's their, in yeah, these that's their shares. yeah. But so the companies it, could make money, and the workers working at the companies could be making money. Right, but is it the job of the president of the United States to lift your wages? That's that's your job. That's not the president's job. Uh, let's go to uh, Mark and Algonquin. Good morning, Mark. You're on eighty nine WLS. Hi, guys. Um, you happy, one, Mark? Well, yeah, thrilled at the uh, Obama spin. Yeah, but, Mark, it's better than it, if, if it stayed at 8.1%. 8. It's better than that. It's three t- it may not be a big move, but it's at least it's a, it's a positive move. you gotta yeah, have, you got to look at it that way. But there's now, there was also an increase of 888,000 people working part-time from last month that were done for economic reasons or slack work or business conditions. Mark, you bring up the point that I was uh, making with Jake early before we came on, which is, to me, the real number is not uh, this unemployment number, but the one I've been writing about, which measures unemployment plus underemployment. So if if you got fired or laid off, and then you get a job for a couple of weeks on a loading dock or, or uh, at a McDonald's or something, that you're considered employed. And I Absolutely. think that's on it. I think that's not what people, you know, where people would put themselves. If you, and if Jake you says that it doesn't matter. If you look at the 114,000 that went up, and you, and and the fact that it went up 888,000 in part-time workers, the reality is it went down for full-time workers. All right. Thank you, Mark. Sure. And just so you understand my point, you can't argue, gee, 8.1, 8.2, what, it, what it's been is bad, 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 and then as soon as it goes to a number that people think is good, we'll say, well, we're not going to look at that number anymore. We're looking at this other number but who of total set, unemployment. who set the 8.2 was the important number? That is David always, Axelrod? It, but it's always been. The unemployment number, that's the number. When Bush was president, that's what it's always yeah, been. Yeah, but it was worse because the unemplo- if you lose your job, I, you know, I, I, I know what you're saying, but I'm just trying to say that I've been advocating in my column that the other number, 
the true unemployment I, I number is the one that, that I, measures the pain of the American people. But now I can see David Axelrod leading me. You know, I should put a bell around my neck like a little sheep and go, you know, go up the pasture wherever David wants me to go. And I'm not going to go there. Yeah, but I understand. Although I am happy. I understand that. But when George Bush was president, yeah. at one point, you know, unemployment was under 5%. And then after 9-11, it went, it went up again with the recession. No one ever talked about the real unemployment number. That was always the number. Well, that I was think, always the number. I mean, to be fair, that was always the number. I want to be fair, but I also want to be accurate. Uh, Patty and Mike in her car. Not, I, I'm looking. We're says, ready to fight it, here. It says Patty. in my car, and I'm wondering what the heck are you doing in my car? No, I'm in my car. What are you doing math in your car for, Patty? Well, because you're scaring me. Driven me crazy for so many months. So here's here's the question that I've had: How come first time? jobless claims continue to go up week after week to a rate of about 325,000 every week consistently for two years now. But yet when we add 114,000 jobs, the the unemployment rate goes down. I mean, just this week, 325,000 more people filed for unemployment for the very first time. I just don't understand the math. So something is screwy here. And John, I think you're absolutely right in your columns that it, it is the, the underemployed. And I also have an answer for Sam, by the way. The, I've worked for a company that's been uh, bought and flipped three times by private equity companies. And two of the companies that bought us and flipped us were interested in growing our company. And both of those times that we were bought and flipped by those companies that wanted to grow us, my salary went up because they wanted to attract better employees. They wanted to keep those of us that were doing a great job. So they incented people with better wages to come work for us, better salaries, better commission plans. And that's why if you're interested in growing a company, everybody will everybody will uh, benefit from that, including those that work through higher wages. Thank you, Patty. Thanks. 921, back after this on 89WLS. When the candidates want to reach you, they come here. Your Common Sense Election Headquarters, 89 WLS. 928. Happy days are here again, Jake. This is uh, Jake Hartford and John Casson for Bruce and Dan on WLS 89. Putting politics aside, it's a movement towards the positive for the economy. Yes, I feel like, again, I'm going to buy a yacht. I'm going to go look online and buy a 64-footer. Uh, at 10.37, we're going to have Jim Pedagoukas on to explain some of the numbers, how they how they're arrived at. And, and the and, real number, the real unemployment, underemployment number. Jake's shaking his head. Now, well, you have to be, you know, you have to be consistent, John. You know? I am consistent. Because when you argue like that, it's kind of like, well, eight, eight, eight point two. No. Is it, it was important until I it's am, no longer eight point two. Then it's some other. No, number. no, no. I I don't know what other people have done. As far as I'm concerned, I've been reporting and talking about the underemployment number as an as a um, as a as a measurement of people's pain. Okay, My, and if others want to set. If David Axelrod wanted to set that eight eight point two eight point zero number, which he did months ago, and other people want to go ma and get herded into the Mike, you know, into the pasture by by Mike, are you being herded David. into the pasture? <laughs> Mike, well, a, lot, a, lot, a lot of people are being herded to the pasture. I'm kind of the Mike. Let me let, sheep. let me hear the sheep sound. Come on. Uh, there you uh, go. Not, not for me. I heard Obama's really happy about these numbers because he loves poor people, so that's why he made more of them. There's more people working, Mike. <laughs> Mike, well, isn't it a good thing, uh, really? You guys touched on a few things. Uh, we're uh, coming up to the holiday season, and being in the transportation business, things are a little bit busy, or picking up, I should say. So, and I, I know that Kmart. Boys or us, I think uh, Target mentioned that they're going to hire a little more seasonable help this year. So are these numbers still going to be around three months from now? Are it, these just temporary do, part-time jobs? It doesn't like, matter. These are the numbers. These are the numbers that are there today, and the people that are getting those jobs at Toys R Us, Kmart, well, whatever, fine. they've for got jobs. Months, if I'm working for three months, I'm not going to. I'm, I'm still not going to be qualified to buy a house or a brand new car. 
but it's will only you? A temporary, it's only a temporary fill. But if you got it's a job, get me by. Hey, I have a job. No, what I mean I is, enough, if you have a job, job, I have barely enough money to, with with the gas prices so high to get to my job, to afford to eat, you know, something to eat, and get back to my home to turn around and go back to my job because it's a low paying job. Are these careers? Or are these just filling jobs? They're filling jobs, but they're jobs. And and w- the question is, will people give? Obama credit for it and vote for him because of this. 9.30, time for news weather traffic with Dave Stewart right here on 89 WLS. Notre Dame, Miami. How you doing, everybody? I'm Chad Kopic. Fighting Irish coverage begins with my pregame at 4.30 this Saturday right here on 89 WLS. 9.37, want to remind you to join 89 WLS and AARP on October 16th at the Union League Club of Chicago for an 11th Congressional District candidate debate between Judy Biggert and Bill Foster. It's moderated by our own Bruce Wolf. Go to WLSAM.com to reserve your seat. We are talking about the unemployment rate has dropped to 7.8%. Although, uh, although I would give you another number. I'm uh, reading this from one of the stories in the AP. Still, many of the jobs the economy added last month were part-time. The number of people with part-time jobs who wanted full-time work rose 7.5% to 8.6 million Americans, the most since February 2009. And the unemployment rate number is 7.8%. Yeah, you heard what I said. So whatever's easiest to understand, let's do it. And you know what? Let's end the, end the campaign all, right now. But it's that's over. All, but, well, see, I'm you're, just going to go on vacation. You're 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 looking at politics. I'm looking at people with jobs, and there's more people with jobs. Did you hear what I just said? I know what you just said. I said the number of people with part-time jobs who wanted full-time work rose 7.5 percent to 8.6 million, the most since February 2009. And I and I said the benchmark <laughs> has been the unemployment rate, and that right, is right. down to 7.8 percent. Right. Okay, put the goat bell on me. Let take me to the pasture. Mary and Joe, yet good morning, Mary. You're on 89 WLS. Hello, how are you guys today? Hey, Mary. Hey, I just have a question. I would like to know, as an American citizen, and speaking for the country, are we supposed to be satisfied with the 7.8%? You can be satisfied with whatever number you want to be satisfied with. Because I think it's still awful. My son went to apply for a job in law enforcement in Chicago, over 4,000 applicants. 80% 80% black, 10% Hispanic, and 10% white. He found that out because that's what the gentleman stated before they had their conference. So this is unacceptable to me, the 7.8%. Mary, uh, you know how to get a job in Chicago. you got to call the guy. <laughs> call your committeeman. No, my son graduated now in May. He has a 3.6 GPA and a double major and is having a hell of a time trying to find a job. With over 4,000 people applying for a job, there's no way. Is he supposed to be satisfied with a part-time job? I hope he finds one. If he gets the part-time job, then he'll be part of that little number that everyone's that we're happy about because we're well, happy. And like you said before, it's going to be seasonal help. And I just hope everyone is supposed to be happy with this because i'm sure not and so are these 7.8 percent people that are still looking for work thank you mary thank you now when george bush was president and the unemployment rate was under five percent there were people unhappy with that number too and when there were three hundred thousand jobs added people were screaming bloody murder but uh kurt on the Eden's good morning kurt you're on 89 wls oh jake i know you hate it when you're wrong but um there's actually not more people working there's just more people that left the workforce When Barack Obama took office, there was 113 million people in the workforce. Today, there's 111.5, just people giving up. So the actual unemployment rate is down because people just gave up. They didn't find jobs. Wait, but then how come during the summer when the unemployment rate went up, that was because more people had quit uh, leaving the workforce looking for jobs. You can't have it both ways. Because they were, they were working, it's, it's, looking it's for simple, jobs. It's simple math. There's, there's, there's no such thing as simple people. math. There's, there's 1.5 million people w- less working now than there was when Barack Obama took office. Yet unemployment is lower than when he took office. How could that be? Just magic? Well, not, to wh- me- not to mention the reason this it, it went down this time is because they found 
800,000 more people on on surveys when they call people's home. They just magically found 800,000. Why do you think Jack Walsh tweeted that these Chicagoland politicians, they can't win debates, so they change their numbers? Right. Now, here's the guy that knows what he's talking about, but I guess he's a moron, too, right? Who? Jack Welch, former uh, uh, CEO of GE. You know, I, I have a lot of respect for him, but I don't know what he knows about Chicago politics. He knows numbers, though, and he knows the numbers are wrong. I mean, you could, you believe whatever you want. I mean, fairy dust and things. But it, it, I love fairy the dust. Are the numbers. All I'm asking is Chumbalone Nation. I, we love Jake, but on this Chumbalone Nation, we have to disagree with well, him. Well, in Kurt's, in Kurt's position, though, because yeah. the number went down, it's because people left the workforce. Well, when the number went up, they said people left the workforce. You can't have it both ways. It's one or the other. That's why. We're going to have Jim Pettigrew sign a 10th. 37 yeah, he'll explain it explain all. some of this stuff. Uh, Dan and uh, Bourbon A. Good morning, Dan. Good morning. How are you? Uh, you know, it's, you know it's, it's harvest time. Good crops, crops, bad crops. They've been, they've been harvesting in Illinois since August. And good crops or bad crops, you still need the help. And there's truck drivers, grain elevators. You have fertilizer services. I mean, all these businesses, corporate farmers, you have all these people. If they got to hire people to pay the taxes... Well, they're writing a check, and that check goes on somebody's Social Security or whatever. So, hey, that, that affects the number, and there's farm reports that come out on this. I'm not just – there's a farm report that comes out and says, oh, help what up on farm industry by X amount. Well, is that factored in here? Well, was it, fact, was it factored in a year ago? Yes. It's always factored in. It's got to be factored in. But, I mean, it's now, now because we're coming to an election in, three, in straight 30 days, oh, well, this is now this Godson. All I'm just saying is this is a season, like every, other people, it's a seasonal thing. And I'll tell you what, after the election, when the plowing's done, the grain's all hauled to the elevators and sent to the mills or wherever, the numbers are going to go down and you're going to see the other things shaking. Who, not, now what is it? All right. Thank you, Dan. There's another story out today that $4 gallon gas may be permanent. And for those people who are complaining about that, uh, remember what Bill Clinton said. Uh, and I know people have short memories here, that <laughs> the president mandated that the miles per gallon go up on cars from 20 to 40. Right. There's a lot of cars out there now getting 40 miles per gallon. That So if you trade it in your car that gets 20 for one that gets 40, even though the gas price per gallon has gone up from $1.80 when, when Obama took office to $4 now, a little over more than half, uh, if you got that new car, you're still paying the same amount for your 20 miles of driving. So people shouldn't complain about that either. They should just go out and buy the new new car that gets 40 miles per gallon. Or a horse. 944, back after this in 89 WLA. Breaking news around the clock. One station making history every day. Chicago's talk leader, 89 WLS. 950, John Cash, Jay Carver, in for Bruce and Dan. Yes, Jay. You have something to say to me, my friend? No, now people can go out and buy that car that gets uh, the 40 miles per gallon. So, they don't, so it's not like they're paying $4 a gallon for gas. It's like paying $2. You know, the best stuff on radio happens in the break, and uh, that's where I'm asking the producers to bring me the David Axelrod tinfoil hat to protect me from Jake. Because, I don't know, Jake, You're, I don't know, are you going dark side on us or what? No, I'm just, uh, you know... It's kind of dark sidian. No, I'm just we're just talking about the numbers and I'm I'm as been uh, written in one of the columns here in Chicago a few years ago. I'm just a prominent journalist. Okay, he's referring to the Cellini trial yesterday where the boss of the combine finally went to prison for a year. It was a year and a day which meant that it, it's really only a few months. And Judge Zagel said that he got let many letters of support for Cellini including from three prominent journalists, and I want to be on record, all my readers know, loyal readers, Monday or Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Sunday in the Chicago Tribune, that I would never write a letter on Cellini's behalf. But three did. But you are a prominent journalist, too. Uh, that I'll leave that to you, to my broadcast partner, Jake Hartford, John Cass, and for Bruce and Dan. Uh, Darrell and St. John, good morning, sir. Hi, how are you? What's on your mind? I had a um, a question here in regards to that unemployment rate. Um, I don't know if, if anybody's brought this up or if, if you knew about it, but 
as of September 2nd, uh, the amount of benefits that somebody, at least in the state of Indiana and many other states, has dropped down to 63 weeks. It originally was at 99 weeks. They need dropped it down to, I believe it was 77 weeks. And then as of September, it dropped down to 63 weeks. So now anybody who is beyond that 63rd week is no longer counted in the unemployment rate or in the unemployment percentage. Uh, I don't know how many people that would be or how it would affect it in, in a way, but I'm sure that has something to do with it dropping. You mean that knowing that you're, you're not going to get the government check forces people to get that part-time job? Oh, absolutely it would. Oh, absolutely. Well, if that's the case, then we should cut unemployment benefits to 26 weeks. Uh, absolutely. I mean, well, yeah, I, I, I totally agree. But... Um, the amount, uh, if you do that, then, you know, unemployment would be back down to 5%. Thank you, Darrell. Because those people would no longer be accounted for. Thank you. Yeah, but we'd all, under this administration, we'd all be pushing rickshaws. It would be like those rickshaws downtown. Which are unlicensed in Chicago. Yeah, we heard about that this week. That was weird. Huh? Uh, we're going to have Jim Pethagoukas on at 1037. Uh, we'll ask him some of these questions about how, when people go off unemployment, how that factors into it. And the real unemployment number. But we're also how, if people are not looking for it, does it make it go up, go right. down, and all that other good He'll stuff? He'll explain it. Yeah. And I, we also want to remind people, we're in for Bruce and Dan, and they continue to be in for Don and Roma. Uh, Don is still recovering. If you wish to send him a Get Well card, you can. It's getwelldon at gmail.com, or you can go to our website, wlsam.com. And you can you know get information there, keep up to date on what's going on with Don, or send him a message through the website. And we, we all wish him well. We all wish him well, and we miss you, Don, because especially today... He'd be happy. The unemployment number's down. I could just imagine the smoke rising, coming out of your ears to hear this in the, in the, the place where you stand, to hear this like pro 7.8 number stuff. 954, back after this. The latest news from the nation and across the globe is just minutes away with ABC News. 89 WLS and WLSAM.com. Uh, Jake and John. Jake. That's Jake it. and John. That's, that's right. Good. That's all Everybody I need to knows know. who we are. That's right. By now. Uh, <laughs> I'm the one with the tinfoil hat. And Jake is happy with the day. You know, I've been looking into the reports of these numbers, and there's more numbers that I know are just going to distress you, John. Well, we'll talk about that later when we have Jim uh, Pettit the Kukas on at uh, 1037. More to come right here. John and Jake in for Bruce and Dan on 89 WLS.